Rotates, I see. Yeah, well, it took a while to get the colour right, because the original idea was purple and orange. But we found with purple and orange, when that rotated, everyone felt a bit sick. Ah. I like the spherical aspect of it. Very pleasing on the eye. And, um, how involved has he been? Oh, well, he's been fully involved. Project leader. Well, you know what it's like when he gets the bit between his teeth. I certainly do. And how did you become involved? Well, I get called into the office and he says to me, I'm thinking of creating a system of plants with a fully integrated ecology. Now I'm a bit stumped at what he's going on about. But I'm thinking, you know, I'll play along. Yeah. Then he said, we've got to get it all done in seven days. <laughs> a week? <laughs> well, I know it's marvellous what they can do these days, but how did he manage all that in a week? Well, we use the authorised King James version of the creation. <laughs> a lovely package called Genesis. Though I am legally obliged to point out that other versions of the creation are available and are to be treated equally valid, even the crazy ones. Well, we don't want to be in any trouble, do we? No. So anyway, I'm standing there, and he moves over to the drawing board in that mysterious way of his and says, No time like the present, let's get cracking and call this day one. Let there be light. So I turn on the light. And the general gist is when there's light, it will be called day, and when there isn't, it will be night. And that's pretty much it for day one. So I go back to my cloud thinking, six days to do everything else? Oh, it's going to be tight. So, uh, what happened the next day? Well, I'll go back into the office, and he's in a funny old mood. This time he says to me, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now I've got a bloody clue what he's going on about. But I notice he's not long been out the bath because his hair's still wet. So I asked, is there a problem with the plumbing? And he said, no, it's not that. But what it is, is that where we are is going to be called heaven. And down there, ain't. That explains all the new signs. You are now entering heaven. Please worship responsibly. Yeah, but it turns out that's all we're doing for day two. So I'm thinking five days to do everything. Now I am starting to panic. Well, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, it's been two days and all you've got is a new name for this place and a name for when the light is on and off. Exactly. But day three is where it all kicks off properly. Uh, see, uh, sorry, excuse me for interrupting you, old chap, but um, what's this place called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's decided he's going to call it... Uh. 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 Bit of a dull name. <laughs> well, we fancied calling it Meta B this free, but the focus group thought that was a little bit pertly. So a decision on the name goes back and forth till he comes up with one of his more brilliant ideas. He decides to hide the secret of happiness in the name. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, you take each letter, E-A-R-T-H. Each letter represents a word, and these words spelled out is a secret to eternal happiness. Ooh, fascinating. So, what's the secret? Oh, I can't remember exactly. It's something like, E, anything round, try Haribo. Cakes, pizzas, buns? No, it wasn't that exactly, but he figured it won't take him long to work it out. So, anyway, the first thing to do on day three is to get the waters together on the face of the earth and make some dry land. Then on the dry land, he brought forth grass, herbs, fruit trees. The design team were marvellous. So, uh, any designs didn't make it? Yeah, we had to take out the triffids. They didn't play nicely with the others. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there was this strange tree, the, the tree of knowledge, it's called. But he was in two minds about putting that one in. Why didn't he want it in? Well, you look at all the other fruit trees, they just make fruit, right? I mean, <coughs> apple trees make apples, and pear trees make pears, and banana trees make bananas, and so on, and so on, and so on. But, this tree of knowledge, now, it brings forth fruit, all right. But rather than just being one of your five a day, this one also brings with it strange metaphysical concepts. I beg your pardon? Well, just as you're taking a bite, and you're thinking, mm hmm now, this is nice and juicy, and not all like an apple. You start asking yourself strange questions like, who am I, what am I, and what have I got any clothes on? Fascinating. So, um, what happened to the tree? Well, it's gone into the Paradise Garden on a trial basis, but the big guy's made it abundantly clear that nothing is to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge until he's made his mind up to if it's staying or not. How interesting. But other than that, day three was pretty smashing. Then came day four. Ooh, what happened? Well, the design team just started working on the creature, creatures of the land and came up with this brilliant collection of huge, terrifying, scary lizard things. Dinosaurs, they were called. Yeah, they were terrific. 
Uh, but the great divinity decides this is not a direction he wants to pursue at this particular time, and decides to turn them into stone and bury them under the ground. <laughs> Put it on the back burner, so he says. So instead, the rest of day three spent hang uh, day four, sorry, spent hanging stars on the underside of the newly named heaven and making the sun and the moon. The sun will pop up to let everyone know that it's day, and the moon will let everyone know that it's night. Which leaves us just 72 hours left to finish off every other living thing. Oh, well, you had your work cut out then. Too right, but day five was brilliant. Fish and Foul Friday, we called it. He brought forth, <laughs> he brought forth all the sea creatures and all the birds. Yeah, it was brilliant. Although, yeah, we did have one crisis. Turned out one of the dinosaurs didn't mothball properly. What? Not turned to stone and bury? Yeah, yeah, that exactly. But to be fair, the big guy was pretty cool about the whole thing. So, all we did was we dropped it into a lake near this area we're going to call Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't do any harm, as long as it keeps its head down. <laughs> so, with 48 hours to go, you've still got a lot to do. That's what I thought too, but day six, we worked our wings off. After the full start of the dinosaurs, the design team started working on all the beasts of the earth and all the cattle and the bugs and uh, everything that people upon the earth. As you call it. And you know what is that way does the boys. Yes. <laughs> Always makes me chuckle. Yeah. Well anyway, one of these things that creep us is this thing called a snake. Ugh. Made my flesh crawl. Made my feathers stand on it. Oh, I got a picture of one in. Have you ever seen anything so creepy? Oh. <laughs> anyway. We're about there. All the living things accounted for brought forth by himself with a day to spare. Then he wants to make another creature and call it man. Man? What does that look like? Oh, he decides he wants to make it look like him. Really? Like him? Yeah, yeah, like him. Really? It looked not Ah, uh, not so much with a beard, just two eyes. <laughs> so he creates a couple of men and calls them Adam and Steve. <laughs> and they're getting on like a bush on fire until he has a change of mind. So with a couple of upgrades and a tweak, Steve becomes Eve. All for the sake of diversity, so he says. So man, and indeed the upgraded version, woman, turn out to be alright. Now this is where you've got to take your halo off to the big fella. He sets them up as guardians of this new earth and gives them dominion over all the other creatures while he gets to work on new projects. Hang on a minute. You mean these new things are in charge down there? But why didn't he put us in charge? Isn't that what we were created for? That paradise down there belongs to us. Why aren't we running it? God knows. I don't. <laughs> and he's happy with how it's all turned out, is he? Well, I think so. But you know what he's like. He does keep his cards close to his chest. Hmm. Uh, may I ask, can we go down there? Yeah, yeah. But there are rules. Now you can go down there, but you must disguise yourself as one of the animals. No turning up with your wings flapping and scaring the crap out of them. And you must not interfere with man and woman, all right? All right. And for God's sake, don't tell them about the tree of knowledge in the Paradise Garden, or we'll all be in the shh duck. Well, I completely understand. It's been lovely chatting to you. Yeah, you too. I'm so by the way. Lucy. Lucy. Short for Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> Upstairs. I'm on the way, Kappa. 
a lovely evening for a walk. Well, I, I said it was going to rain later. Thunder, maybe. Maybe lightning. So what did you want to talk about? One moment, darling. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, tell him it's okay and it's done. I'll email it over tomorrow. No, it's not on here. They have to fill out section 10 before they can complete the final contract. Yeah, just do it. But tell him to ring me. My full attention, darling. So what is it? I know I've been working a lot lately. But you know why, don't you? It's the money. Without the money, we're buggered. We'd be like those losers that want it but don't do anything about it. What? You don't want it. What do you mean? No more. What? Just do it! I don't understand. No more money. Explain. Explain like I'm a child. Don't use that patronising tone with me. If I, if I didn't work, you'd have no nice clothes, perfect hair, beautiful nails. You do exasperate me. You haven't said a word to me in over a week. <laughs> you talk to me now about how I'd like to buy nice things for you, for you to wear so you don't get scorned by other men. Oh. I get it. You're overwhelmed by my attentions. Tensions on me. All those months luring me in with your smile and your form. It was in my view whenever I was around. Don't protest too much, darling. You know what you were doing. All women know what they're doing with their bodies when they want to know. I'm the innocent one here. I did the right thing. You look so vulnerable and lost. All I do is try and protect you. Protect you from those other men. You know, those men that wouldn't have treated you right. They wouldn't have bought me nice gifts. attention you deserve. That's what money does, die. It protects you. I protect you. Understand.
It's a lovely evening for a walk.
love you too much. You're driving me insane. I mean, the problem with our relationship is, well, that we're in a relationship, right? Sorry, darling. It's just, I don't think I want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be blunt with you. I hope you don't mind. Do you mind? The rain makes you look really ugly and you get so moody and so angry. Too blunt? <laughs> oh, God. You're crying. Oh, don't cry. Oh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look gorgeous in the sunshine. You love the sun. Smile. Oh, my God. Have you had your teeth whitened? Fuck's sake. <laughs> Six and a half years enough for you. Oh, your traits. The ones I love and the ones I hate. Your dark criminality and your ways of high society. Sexy. I see real beauty in you. Beauty that you don't see yourself. You're really tall, but I can lay down and look up and see all those refinements of beauty carved into that face. Age? You have no age, you bastard. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Give me the number of your surgeon. Uh, Every time I look out of this boardroom window, you're different. Stunning, but addicted to plastic surgery. I told you it were a bad habit. Metallic were never yours. <laughs> it's not you. You're fine. Lovely, in fact, and smarter than me. I just want to pursue younger women. <laughs> <laughs> All that shopping, remember? Clothes, shoes, books, shoes. All those things I never really needed, you made me buy them. Oh, God, in Oxford Street. Fucking Oxford Street. I cannot believe that you dragged me into Topshop at half past five on December 23rd, only to run into all those dicks buying last minute presents for their wives. <coughs> no, don't you laugh. You're just as bad. No presents for me, though, huh? No, nothing. Asshole. Yes, the Wolseley, the Savoy, tea at the Ritz. Oh, okay, you treated me. All right, just call me rotten. But still... Not romantic. <laughs> Remember that new year I took you up to Primrose Hill to watch the fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> that lantern got stuck in the tree and nearly set it alight. It started to snow. That's romantic! <laughs> we lived in St. John's Wood then, one of your better sites. An investment with no fucking return. You celebrated three birthdays for me, a wedding and a christening. All three birthdays were utterly disastrous. It is not classy to dance on the bar of G.A.Y. <laughs> Why did you tell me? <laughs> Why the hell did you leave me to sleep in the middle of Old Compton Street? You could have put me in a cab. You can be a bit of sometimes. I were in Amsterdam on my day off. And I remember you telling me how you, you hated you, Grant, because he stole Notting Hill. Yeah, you like this. My PA told me he sizes in paint. <laughs> Cunty, cunt, cunt. <laughs> 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 You've stolen my phone twice, my purse countless times, and yet I'm still so in love with you. You're so wicked. We partied all weekend without a wink of sleep, only to find myself in someone else's bed in the morning. These lips have made slips, not once or twice, but nothing serious. You've held my hand through two relationships and numerous dates. Shit, no, not, not like that, I'm no whore. Oh, shit. You naughty boy. <laughs> got me so drunk, nearly every day of the week. I was a fully finished raving alcoholic. You exploited my weaknesses. 
I'll drink to that. <laughs> Do it. Well, yes, we've been on television together. The problem was, mine was just a bit fucked. Damn, but you're still a sexy bitch. <laughs> we went to the theatres, remember? <laughs> the opera, ballet. Oh, remember that time at Liza Minnelli on a party together? <laughs> I thought she was a wax model from Mum Jesus. <laughs> there she was, snorting cocaine off a piano and so Minnelli as good as you. <laughs> you fucking politics. You could never make up your mind. You got conservative tendencies. What? You're not gonna vote for him, are you? I can't take the bad sex anymore. I hated travelling with you. What a goddamn nightmare. It was always hot and stuffy and there were way too many people. <coughs> I've never sniffed so many armpits in my life. I wish I had an armpit fetish. <laughs> You made me late so many times, fucker! Bus. Bus. The only buses I get, darling, are those black ones with the orange lights. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had so many come and go, but I never thought I'd leave you. Not me. But here I am. Oh, please stop sniffing. My bank I've spoken to the board. I've made up my mind. I've made a decision. I'm fucking out of here. I'm going back up north. I hate these fucking southern bastards. These fucking American twats, the bloody jocks and these posh bits and bitches. I fucking had it. I'm going to get out of this bloody place and get to some sanity. Fucking spade to fucking spade. Sometimes you've got to take a step back to move forward. I have to leave. Please understand. It's me. It's me. It is not you. I still have so much to learn about you that I hope in a few months that we can catch up over a drink. Okay. Yeah. Well. Sorry. <laughs> well, life goes on. Thank you for everything, really. Yeah. Bollocks! <laughs> into a bar. <coughs> yeah, he said a man walks into a bar. Uh, are you talking to me? Yes. A man walks into a bar. Not a man, and furthermore, I am not talking to Bar, so change the bloody record. 
<laughs> You're an actress, aren't you? What's that got to do with anything? Uh, well, surely you can convince an audience as man or woman. You're not one of those celebrity starlets, are you? Meet your moppet? Bottle blonde, Hollywood, Botoxed, you know, but soap opera, hackette, end of the pier, amateur, mere actress. Mere actress? Oh, you've got a bloody nerve. I'm as good as you can. But owls not to reason why. Besides, um, it's traditional. It would look odd otherwise, so you don't do uh, impress us with your acting or not. No, it'll be fine. I promise it'll be fine. Look, I need to get on. I'll have something for you soon. <laughs> a man walks into a bar with a duck on his head. A duck? Where am I supposed to find a fucking duck? <laughs> well, improvise. You know, create the illusion. Allow the audience to suspend their disbelief. Just like that. Well, if it's beyond your acting that uh, talents would overstretch your, your acting ability, we can always advertise. Advertise? <laughs> yes, you know, advertise uh, an audition, see how much they want the part, how much they'd be prepared to do, to, to uh, tread the board, to garner the acclamation and acclaim of an audience, to see their name up in life. Are you questioning my <laughs> professionalism? Doubting my certainty of characterization? Mastery of mimicry, transcendence of pertness and vulgar sexual posturing in the pursuit of art. I'm as good as you any day, Buster. Doubt, doubt. Well, there's a whole new vast area of comedic potential, isn't there? I'll have you know there has never been any question of doubt as to my ability. No, no, no. Uh, quite so, quite so. Um, no, you are a rock. You are the rock in the, the feckless, storm-tossed ocean that is the theatre. You stand proud and strong amongst the flotsam and jetsam of young talent. That's right. In my, in my opinion, there is no substitute for experience, and you can't go far wrong with a grounding in repertory. Uh, true, true, true. Not that the young people of today work as hard or for as little as we do. <laughs> not a chance, not a chance. Can I ever tell you about the time that it's has been Quite saved. likely, quite the most likely in all probability. At another time, another place, the prospect of a, a chip down memory lane, the heady waft of nostalgia, with you could be quite a delight. But you see, for now, the play is the thing, you see. A character has emerged to be uh, brought to life. You no, know, that rather needs to be lived. Yes? So, so the, the past times remembered must be folded away into a, a, a nap, like a, a petite, uh, uneaten madeleine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, for now, the game's afoot. Yes, yes, it is afoot, uh, and I can hear it. Your cue is racing towards you. A man walks into a bar. <clears throat> With a duck on his head. I was talking to the dumb. <laughs> on the arc. He is, darling. Uh, uh, once he gets into the swing of things, it, uh, it'll pick up and become more interesting, it will. It's going to need to. Hi. Oh, you got me. 
female. That was quick. Well, I thought it was funny. <laughs> it's only the beginning, for heaven's sake. Give it a chance. Well, I don't know, really. These things sort of evolve. Sexist? It's meant to be sexist. Well, just at this stage. You'll see when it's finished.
we go to number two. Uh, bing! Here we are on floor two. All the men have jobs and love children. That's very nice, <laughs> but I was actually hoping for a little bit more than that. Okay, fine. Up we go to number three. Bing! Here we are on floor three. All the men have jobs, love children, and are drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> wow! There should be someone here for me. <laughs> yes, I should think so. <laughs> Mind you, this is only level three. True. Um, can we go up to the next floor? Okay, up again. Number four. Bing! Here we are on floor four. All the men have jobs, love children, are drop dead gorgeous, and all have a very romantic history. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. I, know. I never knew such men existed. <laughs> item here, madam, and when you do, you just bring him down to my tilly willy and I'll see you to that. <laughs> Please. 
Somebody in. I know we're here. Say something nice. Huh? Through the letterbox. Say something nice. Something nice? <clears throat> something nice. Through the letterbox. Through the letterbox. Hello! Nice weather we're having. <laughs> <coughs> Nothing. If you didn't ask a question, if you require a response, you must ask a question. I asked a question. No, that was a statement. <laughs> Try using a question word like what <laughs> or why. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Why don't you try again? Nobody's going to come. Oh, don't be defeatist. Go on, try again. Hello? It's me again. <laughs> What do you think of the nice weather we're having? No fucking answer! <laughs> I think I see what the problem is. Do you know? I do. So what is it? The weather. <laughs> the weather? The weather. What do you notice? Clouds. Clouds. <laughs> And your point is, what would you say those heavy, dark, grey, thundery clouds are indicative of <laughs> nice weather? It's small talk. Normal people like to talk about the weather. No, the issue isn't with your conversational gambit per se, it's the misinformation. The weather is patently not nice. How are you going to establish a rapport with someone who doubts your ability to tell the truth? Are you calling me a liar? Yeah. <laughs> Any fucker calls me a liar to get what's coming. And what if it's a woman? Is it a woman? <laughs> it doesn't say. It doesn't say. It must say. Why doesn't it say? It should say. I don't like it. It's an oversight. I don't like it. No one's infallible. They never make mistakes. I don't like it. I've got a bad feeling. <coughs> Something's not right. I don't like it. Oh, you worry too much. Why don't you check round the back? Well, you check her at the back. Okay. Wait. We should stay together. Just in case. <clears throat> You do it. 
do what? Say something nice. You have a wonderful smile. Fuck off! <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Indifferent weather we're having. <laughs> I really must apologise about my associate's ill manners. He's under a lot of stress at the moment. It's the times we're living in, I'm afraid. Now, why don't you come to the door? And then we can conduct this conversation in a more agreeable manner. <clears throat> Nobody's coming. They know why we're here. Don't doubt it. <clears throat> we'll give them some time to reflect. Where did they come from? Who? Clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they come from? <clears throat> Nepal. Nepal? For all of them? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> anywhere. They can form anywhere. <laughs> I wandered lonely as a cloud. <laughs> that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. <laughs> Where is Nepal? <laughs> In the Himalayas. Near China. Pretty far away then. <laughs> a man could get lost in such a place. It'd be hard for them to find me there. You know, the rescue services. Absolutely. <laughs> Potentially one could disappear and never be found. Yeah. And there's plenty of places in the world you could disappear. Absolutely. Brazil, for instance. Brazil, absolutely. I'd go to Brazil. <laughs> Good football. Good escaladas <laughs> on the beach and that. Where would you go? What? There's nothing. No way. What's so fucking funny? Share it with the class. You said penis. <laughs> what? You said penis coladas. <laughs> it's Pina Coladas. I said Pina Coladas. No, you said Penis. <laughs> no, I said Pina. No, you said Penis. Pina! Penis. <laughs> no, you just heard Penis because that's what you were thinking about. Thinking about penises. <laughs> Thinking about your mother's penis. <laughs> you are a disturbed individual. <laughs> I said Pina. somewhere else. I've always had a hankering for the Far East, perhaps. Thailand. Thailand. Fuck Thailand. Teddy bars and perverts. Brazil's the place. Fuck pest, let's go in and get them. Give them time. Time away. Whoever is in there needs to come to terms with the inexorable. There will be plenty of time to come to terms. I knew this was coming. Never doubt the human ability for conscious denial, even in the face of the inevitable.
due to in what? Get into this situation. I'd like to think I would have paid a little more attention to the small print. There's no way I'd be caught out. I'm no piece of actor. No. no. Fucking way. What's that supposed to mean? No. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You saying I'm a victim? No. No? No. <coughs> there is a species of ant in Thailand, a carpenter ant. And these ants, these carpenter ants, go about their day-to-day -day business, each one a valid member of ant society, each contributing to the good of the colony. But they share their jungle canopy habitat with a particularly nasty predator, an insidious fungus. It attaches itself <laughs> to an unsuspecting ant, an ant that has perhaps strayed from its designated path, and it infects it, changing the way the ant thinks, altering the way the ant behaves making the ant behave in a way which is wholly beneficial to the parasite. What happens to the ant? <laughs> Once it's outlived its usefulness, a particularly horrific death. Stupid fucker. <laughs> Stupid fucking ant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me in, or I will huff, and I will puff, and I will blow your fucking dog down! Somebody's coming. Fuck. <laughs> 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 <laughs>